Well, Game of Thrones actress Amelia Clark revealed she suffered from two brain aneurysms. Now, this medical emergency nearly kept the actress from her role as Khaleesi. We have a local professor, Dr. Kristen Johnson of the University of St. Augustine, joining us this morning. She's going to discuss warning signs of a brain aneurysm and tell us about some natural prevention methods. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming in because, you know, always when, when a celebrity gets some sort of illness or something mm -hmm. happens and it becomes a, a national talking point. And mm -hmm. so the first thing I'd like to find out, what exactly, what's classified as a brain aneurysm? So an aneurysm occurs when the artery's wall becomes weakened and can kind of have a bulge or an outpouching. And unfortunately, this bulge can rupture, which causes significant and very severe bleeding. Okay, so could this be a blood clot? Is it comparable to a blood clot in the brain? It could occur in the brain. Um, aneurysms can actually occur anywhere in our arteries in our body, um, most commonly in the brain. can also occur in our aorta as well as our legs and spleen. Okay, so what are some of the symptoms? If, if uh, for instance, what was Amelia Clark dealing with before she actually got diagnosed? So the most common symptoms of a ruptured brain aneurysm would include a very sudden, severe, um, kind of like a catastrophic headache. Mm -hmm. um, also typically includes nausea, vomiting, can include um, having a stiff neck, as well as um, changes in vision. So like blurred vision, doubled vision, or even light sensitivity. And kind of in extreme cases can also include having maybe a seizure or becoming completely unconscious. Okay, the first warning signs are very similar to a migraine though too. Can be. Okay, can so be, if, yes. if you are a migraine sufferer, how would you differentiate between, oh, this may be more serious than a migraine, or don't worry about it, or should you just check in general? Well, I think checking in general and contacting a medical professional um, and even calling 911 may be eminent. Um, the headache typically is one of the most common signs, and so if someone who manages and suffers from migraines, it might be the worst migraine they've ever kind of experienced in their life. Okay, so um, let's say if somebody goes to the hospital, they have a brain aneurysm, are, are they doing a CT scan? How do they, they detect that you actually had this ruptured component? Um, they will be doing doing some imaging, um, that's usually the first course of action. Okay, and then what's the treatment program after that as far as therapy, or do they stay in the hospital? Um, it really kind of depends on the severity. Um, if the bulge has already um, broken and there's significant bleeding in the brain, so at that point it typically might involve surgery. Wow, okay, so um, with after effects, with stroke after effects, we know there could be you know, speech therapy, mm -hmm. cognitive therapy. Is there any kind of after impact with a brain aneurysm that you go through therapy for? Well, um, brain aneurysms obviously are very severe, and um, the, the thing that's troubling is that the CDC estimates that about 80% of the time they're fatal. So if someone can um, withstand and get through surgery, um, the typical course of uh, rehabilitation involves obviously becoming medically stable, and then um, inpatient rehabilitation, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Wow, okay, so how about risk factors? Who's at risk for these brain aneurysms? Well, risk factors, I mean, no known real causes. Risk factors might be individuals that currently have high blood pressure as well as atherosclerotic disease. Okay, so it's not hereditary. It, it can be. It can be. Um, okay. It can be kind of a congenital. You may be born um, with some of these bulges in the arterial walls and, and not know until they actually rupture. Um, so there is a genetic predisposition. To hear that she had two, mm -hmm. and the fact that you just told me 80% fatality rate, mm -hmm. I mean, this is pretty extraordinary that not only did she live, but mm -hmm. that she went on to be this incredible role that she is known around the world for. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of times, if the there is of the first one, um, and in her case, she had surgery. Um, then they become a little more um, diligent about observing, right? Because the neuroimaging would sort of give you the clinical signs that you know this person may be at risk. Okay, so to mitigate these risk factors, what can we do um, aside from pills? Because I'm sure there's a pill regimen. There's some medication. Sure. What can we do aside from pills? Really, the best way to reduce is is really through prevention. So that's really maintaining a healthy lifestyle. You 
you know, eating a well-balanced diet, keeping exercise in your daily routine, uh, managing your stress, and, and getting adequate sleep. So in other words, not living a normal life. No. <laughs> just, don't work on a morning show. Don't have children. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so just uh, do everything we know. Live a healthy lifestyle, anything in moderation, but uh, be cognitive of those morning signs. Absolutely, and seek medical attention immediately. Okay, well, you've given us uh, some food for thought. So thanks for waking up early this morning <laughs> and telling us all about that. Thanks for having me. All right.